I have been working at this probably since the mid 80s. I think. I'm a little while now, that's 30 something, 33 years. Because there's an old saying all you need to be a farrier here is a strong back and a weak mind. And we came from a horsey family, and I really had two choices as a teenager whether, as a late teenager, whether I would go into teaching riding and, and trying to be make a living from riding itself and I realised very quickly that I didn't have the necessary skills to do that and the guy who was shooting for us in those days was a guy called Jerry McCoon who died at age 51, very young. He uh, used to go on holiday in those days, back, uh, uh, whatever it was, the early 80s, late 70s, to, uh, to Canada and buy his tools in Canada and uh, he brought me home, I think it was a pair of clippers and a rasp from one of his holidays, I was about 14, he said, look, there you go, you can do trim your own horse's feet now. And he said, I'll show you how to do it a few times while I'm here. And he said, you then can do your own and save your mum money. And that is more or less how I started. I've lived all my life in Kalinche and uh, still live there, but my mum was a very highly respected horsewoman in her day, back in the, I suppose it must have been the 50s, I suppose she was being competitive, she used to ride point to pointers she used to hunt side saddle, she rode side saddle at Dublin, competed at all the major shows, and stopped riding when us three kids came along, and then got back into horses one day, a friend of hers asked her to look after two young ones, a yearling and a two-year-old for her, and uh, they were in our, what we called our front field, and mum looked out the window one day and myself and my friend Ivor were sitting on these two young horses that hadn't been broken, only a yearling and two year old. She thought it's time to get those boys some riding lessons. And that's how we all got back into horses, really. Or how we got into it and how mum got back. I travel as little as, as short a distance as possible because the more time you spend, spend traveling the less time you spend working and people are not prepared to pay you for that wasted hour traveling between you, you where you were last and, and then they only want to pay you for a set of shoes so um, we basically take the hit on the traveling and, and just make sure that you get enough shoes in the same area to do you. A lot of horse owners are very keen to do the best they can for their horses and will spend hundreds if not thousands on, on lotions and potions to try and make these horses make their lives as, as comfortable as possible. Our route into horses was through our mum uh, because she had many contacts, because she had been so heavily involved in her youth. Uh, our, our inroads into the horsey world were through paths that she had followed.